a special request was made tonight for a certain katha by the devotees and it's a very popular it's a very common katha that you would hear time and time again and we'll always be reminded of it especially when we go into the Aranyakanda of the Ram Charitamanas. What is important, my friends, is not the Katha that is being read over and over again, but what we can grasp and what we can remember from listening to the Katha again and again. Because not every time we listen to the Katha, we grasp something. We might take something, we might forget some, but every time we remember, we remember the katha, my friends, we can use one out of several things and practice it in our lives. So, this Ram Charitamanas would have been read in our country, I think every Hindu by now, supposed to know this text by heart. Isn't it? 19, how many years? 175 years ago, when our grandparents came. This is supposed to be going down from Generation to generation, like you know, the, the Guru Shishya Parampara, from one Guru to his disciple, then the Guru, the disciple become a Guru and passing it on. So, the Katha will remain the same, but what is important, what we grasp from it, that is important. Friends, some people will come to the Yajna, some people will go to Satsang, some people will go to uh, the scriptures, and some will take something good, and others may find faults, Others may criticize, others may condemn, regardless of whatever it is, you take what you are capable of taking and live here with it. Some of you, some people, including myself, will take something good. And Didi, you know, some people will live here and they say, I go on there, may I get nothing? Isn't it? So, if you didn't get anything, go ahead, no problem. And if you got something, Hold on to it tight and leave with it. But friends, most importantly, remember, remember, is only when you put your hand in water, you're going to get. And only when you put your hand in fire, you're going to get. And only when you put your mind in the scriptures, you're going to get something. Knowledge. If you come here and didn't get anything, it's not anybody's fault, but your own mind did not penetrate into the katha or take a, took a dip. This is why, Didi, I should have said this the first night, you know. This is called a lake. Ram Charata Manas. Manas is a lake. And when you go to a lake, what do you get? Huh? When you go to a lake, you get water. But this lake is different. When you come to this lake, what do you get, babe? Knowledge. When you come to this lake, this lake has knowledge. Friends, the lake, right in the back here. Baba, that is not a lake, that is the ocean. <laughs> the lake right in the back here, I mean, sorry, the ocean right in the back here, that ocean, my friends, will wet our body. This ocean will soak our mind. This ocean will soak our intellect. This ocean, my dear brothers and sisters, will soak our soul. The outside water is to wash the body. This water on the, is to wash the inside. And that's why we are here. Didi, I don't know if I will be able to celebrate 51 years wedding anniversary like you. But if ever... Bhagwan bless me and my Dulahin to be healthy and strong like you and your Dulaha. I want to do something like this also. So because at this stage in your life, after 51 years of marriage, you would have gone through all different kind of experiences. As a matter of fact, I should bow to your foot tonight. You are bowing to my feet, but you know something? I'll play a trick with you, you know. You know what's the trick? When you bowing to me, I bow into you. And when I am saying, God bless you, I say, Bhagwan, I'll hold back a little thing. Because I want some blessing too. And it's people like you could bless us. It is people like you 
who can guide us, the younger ones. It is people like you who can help us to uplift ourselves. And for this, we want to thank you. This lake is not to clean the body, friends. This lake is to clean the mind. And if we come to the yagya, if we come to the satsang, and the mind did not get some ounce of cleanliness, then... Papa, what do you think? If the mind didn't get clean when we come here, what happens? Nanisha ji? We just pass time. So we're supposed to get something. And so my friends, my Guruji, Sri Pandit Jeevanji, he gave a beautiful little story. And his story told, there was a cow and a pig, P-I-G. <laughs> and the cow and the pig were having a conversation. The pig telling the cow, you know, I am so fed up of this world, you know. And people looking at you, and they put in tikka for you. Didi will put tikka for the cow on Sunday when she do her gaudan. You put the tikka for the cow, and you put a nice mala on the cow, the pig telling the cow. He said, you, they will put a nice mala for you, and then they will do arti and worship you. And all you just give them is milk. And some little dahi and thing they go make, and they go make some ghee, and that's all. He said, but look at me, they don't give me no chandan, they don't give me no mala, and no arti, and they're eating every part of my body. <laughs> the pig said I am so fed up of this thing they are worshipping you and they are eating me the cow said you see there is a big difference you know the difference is I just give them milk and ghee etc etc when am I alive when do you give them the body to eat? When you're dead. Isn't it? You give them your body to eat when you die. In this world, my friends, there are two types of people. People who do good things when they're alive and some people wait to die to do good things. In order for us, to elevate ourselves in any aspect of life, there are nine things that we must do. This is the katha. Didi requested. And those nine things, my friends, on the spiritual part, is very important. This is not to do when we die. Because it cannot be done when we die. It is to be done now when we are alive. And who is, in fact, who is narrating, my friends, these nine pointers, nine stepping stones to elevate the self on the spiritual path? Sri Ram Chandraji, the Lord himself, is speaking to one of his greatest devotee. That devotee, as we all would know, is none other than Shabari. Shabari was a young girl, probably like, how old are you, babe? 12 years. 12 years old in those days and she left the home of her mother and she told the mother for one thing you know I am not going to get married and the mother said why she said because people celebrate in life by sacrificing the life of others for their celebration I don't want to be part of that ma I feel sorry because people are sacrificing other people's life to make themselves happy for my wedding, I prefer not to get married. And the child left the home and friends, she went into the forest and she, in those days, you were not allowed to live in the ashram or in the Gurukul. So she remained outside the ashram and every night she will come and she will take a broom and she will do seva, sweep, clean, everything that she could do in the night when the, uh, the male students were sleeping, the Guru is sleeping. And every morning when the Guru gets up at four o'clock, he see the ashram is all clean. No Nara in Seva for the boys. Ashram all clean. Who is cleaning the ashram? And friends, one night, Matang Rishi remained awake. And he saw that this young child came and she was cleaning and sweeping the ashram. 
and while sweeping cleaning the guru looked at her and every stroke of the broom was like she was cleaning with purity she was cleaning with divinity she was cleaning with love because she was a girl she was not allowed in the ashram and at that time my friends guru matanga he waited and you know standing tall and she her head is bent you know when you're, when you're sweeping your head is bent the cookie broom in a long time there has to be some straw broom what are those broom called the straw ones not the cookie one huh which broom which broom yes hundred <laughs> yes it used to be like a little, a little stick and then the, the, the tail of it is feathery sort of that kind of broom and she was sweeping and her head is bent and suddenly while sweeping she saw two feet and she was scared and gradually she lifted her head she knew my friends that she was not allowed on these grounds she knew that she was not allowed to be in the ashram and as she looked up there were the strong eyes of the guru looked looking at her at four o'clock in the morning my friends that was a time matangri she would arise from sleep four o'clock in the morning and as he looked at her his eyes were piercing through the eyes of shabari she was scared she started to tremble she wanted to run away but as she turned around he stopped her and he said to her devi aap bataiye aapka naam mera naam shabari hai gurudev my name is shabari what are you doing here i am doing seva what is the purpose of this she explained to him why she came into the forest and friends at that time when the guru matangrishi saw the love in shabari he saw her bhakti he, he already saw in and through her he saw everything of shabari he saw her intention he saw her purpose he knew that this was no ordinary little girl this was one of the one of the greatest bhakta or devotee of the lord and friends he blessed her and he said i can see that you are scared i can see that you are frightened but i don't want you to be fill your heart with love in a short time from now my students and myself will be leaving the ashram i want you to remain here and i promise you my child listen to the words of the guru the guru said i promise you my child the lord will come to you you will not have to go searching for the lord but the lord will come to you i can already see that you are like a magnet a spiritual magnet that will attract the lord to you and he will come i promise you the words of matangrishi my friends shabari a young child waited when the guru left she remained in the ashram one week one month one year 10 years 20 years 30 years 50 years 100 years shabari was an old woman according to the katha it was really 10000 years but i'm just using the figure so that we can comprehend a 100 year old person her skin was all wrinkled she could hardly see every day she got up early in the morning she went and she picked the flowers she spread it on the ground she got the fruits she tasted them and put them in basket today my lord will come today my lord will come i tell you if that was me after one month i don't give up if that was me the guru said god is going to come yeah right i picking flowers every day picking fruits and preparing this place and he didn't come that guru is not a true guru and i jump from one guru to the next one this one is not real let me take a next guru and you go guru hopping you know there is guru hopping guru hopping is when well, when you don't get what you want from this guru or you feel you didn't get what you want from this guru you jump on the next one so that's called guru hopping like a little grasshopper <laughs> from one to the next and shabari my friends she believed in the words of the guru matangrishi and she said my guru said bhagwan will come 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 and every day she's saying the same thing bhagwan will come honestly speaking friends if that was me i would have given up what about you 
would you have given up? Yes or no? One month, after one year, what you would have done? Isn't it? After one month, I would have given up. But Shabadi was an old lady. She could hardly walk, walking with a stick. And lo and behold, my friends, one day she saw two handsome young men walking in. And while they were walking towards her, she got up. She took her stick and was walking to the entrance with her back little bent. And she is thinking, Are, is this Bhagwan? Is this my Bhagwan? I don't know. Let me walk up closer. She spread the flowers on the ground. She lighted the deers. She got the fruit. She filled the basket. Let me see. Is this my Ram? Is this my Bhagwan? And she, my friends, is now walking closer and closer to him. Sri Ram Chandraji, my friends, has come and he has given darshan. The words of the Guru came to pass. The words of the Guru so many years before, thousands of years before, he said, the Lord will come to you. And friends, when we believe in the words of our Guru, certainly, certainly, just a, 25 years ago, I was telling the boys coming in the car, 25 years ago, I dreamt my Guru. He was giving me one verse of the Gita. And he told me, just do it. In the, in the dream, sorry, uh, I dreamt he's given me a verse of the Gita and when I went to him and I asked him because I didn't know Sanskrit at that time, he said, do it. And when I went and I looked every verse in the Gita, I looked through until I found it. And it was a verse for my personal sadhana. And just about two weeks ago, I dreamt him again and he was giving me instructions. He was talking to me verses of the Gita. So whenever I, he, I dream him, he always giving me instructions of what to practice in my life. I just look at it that way. When the Guru speaks, my friends, whether it's in real or the Guru speaks in what you call in a dream, it's always guidance. And the Guru said, Sri Ram will come, the Lord will come. And Shabadi believed that. She didn't wait one month and give up faith. She didn't wait one year and lost uh, interest. She didn't wait after two years and change her religion. She maintained her faith. And she maintained that faith. And she had that belief. And friends, she attracted the Lord to her and Bhagwan Sri Ram came. Now when the Lord came, what did he say to her? He said, Shabari, you are indeed one of the greatest devotees of mine. Shabari said, but Adama te Adama Adama Tinari Prabhu, jo neech se bhi neech hai, striya unhe me bhi atyant neech uh, nikrisht hai, aur un me bhi me paap nashak Prabhu, I am the lowest of the low. You know, in Shabari time, she was considered to be Adama te Adama Adama te Nari, the lowest of the low among women. You know, society would brand people like that sometimes, you know. They say, you are the lowest of the low. And Shabari felt like that. She was a Bilwa woman. And a Bilwa woman in those days, my friends, was considered to be an untouchable. It's sad though. They said, if you would meet a person like Shabari in those times and you touch her by mistake, you have to go and do prayer shit. Prayer shit means go in the Ganga and bathe and then sit down and do thousands of job and pre-purify yourself. That is the way society looked at Shabari. Imagine that. What do you think about that? Not nice. Shabari was considered to be the lowest of the low, my friends, as far as man was concerned. But as far as God was concerned, she was the highest of the high. Adama te Adama, Adama Atinari. She is saying this. I am the lowest of the low, but the Lord says to her, I, when I look at my devotees, I do not look at anything except. What? Kahara Gupati Sunu Bhamini Mata. And what's the meaning of Bhamini? Sri Ram looked at Shabari and he addressed her as Bhamini. He says, Kaha Ragupati. Bhagwan Sri Ram spoke. What did he say? Sunu, listen, Bhamini Bata, O oh most beautiful and charming one. O oh most beautiful and charming one. Manao ek bhagati karanata 
I only look, I only recognize one thing in my devotees. And what is that? I recognize their faith. I recognize their bhakti. I recognize their love. That's all I look for in my devotees. Friends, if you have a degree, you think Bhagwan Sri Ram coming to say, let me see your papers. You think he want to see that? Did he? You think this child passed for naps? Yay! Let's give her a round of applause. First choice. But I feel so sorry for her also, you know, to leave here, to go to Naprima Girls every day, babe. I'm sorry. But you will do well. I came up here for five days and I fed up already. And she will have to do that for five years. And then she'll have to do her next two after five for her keep. But Ma Saraswati bless you tonight and I ask Shabari Ma and Sri Ram to bless you. You will do well. Shabari, my friends, she was pure in heart. And you know what? The Lord don't look at our papers. He don't look at our qualification. He don't look at our status. Hey, you say Pandita Bina and dress up in orange tonight, boy. You're looking a little good. You think Bhagwan looking that at that? You think Bhagwan is looking at the color of your sari tonight? Or he is looking at your the color of your kurta and whether you paid one thousand for it or you paid five thousand? That means nothing to the Lord, friends. Absolutely nothing. What he is looking at, however is what is passing through every one of our minds right now. That is what he is looking at. And he knows exactly what is in your mind and my mind. And therefore he said to Shabari, I always, I don't look at the lowness of somebody or the highness of somebody in terms of their earthly qualification, Shabari. I look at their heart. And what the heart must have? Very straightforward message. The Lord says, Pratama Bhagatis Kahao Tohi Pahi Savadana Suni. Savadan meaning, listen very attentively, O Shabari. I am now going to give you the now Vidha Bhakti. I'm going to tell you the nine stepping stones, the nine steps that you must take in your life in order to realize me. Friends, who is Sri Ram speaking to? Shabari? Or us? You think Shabari needs this? She doesn't. She already got the darshan of the Lord. Sri Ram is standing in front of her. So Sri Ram is now giving this to her for our benefit thousands of years after. He says, Pratama Bhagati Santaha Karasanga. Always find yourself in the company of noble souls. Always find yourself in the company of noble souls. People who will encourage you to do, to say wonderful things. People who will encourage us to think in a certain way, in a divine way. People who will encourage us to, assort, to what you call, do good things with our life. Be in the company of such individuals. Not only the temple, you know. You know where is satsang? Where hundred? Where can you have satsang? Over the road by him, he said. And he might be right. Maybe not in the temple only. You can have satsang in your office. You can have satsang in your car. You can have satsang standing up by the street. You can have satsang on the bridge when you're lying in. Satsang means associating with people who speak good things. That is satsang. Associating yourself in the company of people who will encourage you to do good things. That is satsang. Sat means truth. Sang means companionship. So when we are in the company of people who encourages us to do wonderful and good things with our life, that, my friends, is satsang. It does not necessarily mean coming to the temple and sitting and doing like this. This is one form of satsang. But wherever you are in your office, if you are talking positive things, good things, etc., it's also satsang. So Pratama Bhagati Santahakar Sangha. You see, Sometimes we know what is satsang, but we just choose to be negative. The negative things make us look good. You see, if I talk about MP and I start saying bad things about him, that means what? What impression I'm giving you? That I'm better in? 
If I bad talk him, it makes me look good. In the eyes of the ignorant. But the reality is, if I only seeing the bad in him or in you, friend, that means I have nothing good in me. And whatever we have in us, that is what we will see in the world outside. That's why the Hanuman Chalisa tells, take out your mirror and shine the mirror of your mind with the Guru's feet, that when you look at your mirror, you will see a clear reflection. Oh, how many ladies we have here tonight? So many. How many of you? Let me ask uh, Nalisha Ji. How many times you look in the mirror before you come here tonight? Not much. I sure you look in the mirror more than 20 times before you come here. I'll tell you how. Earring, one time. Next earring, two times. Lipstick, three times. Four times. <laughs> I'm talking from experience of my dolehen, you know. My friends, we look at the mirror all the time, but the mirror is only looking at our body. We have to take out the spiritual mirror and look at our minds and see what is happening on the inside. Friends, nobody can fix you on the inside. We have to fix ourselves. No God, no religion, no wealth, no nothing can fix us on the inside if we don't fix ourselves. You could be Brahmana, you could be Kshatriya, you could be Vaishnava, you could be Shudra. Nobody could fix you. You have to fix yourself. Friends, Pratama Bhagati Santahakara Sangha, are we? Now, this is the million dollar question. The question is, my friends, are we in satsang when we are by ourselves? Yes or no? What is satsang by yourself? Huh? Satsang by yourself means when you are sitting and you are quiet and reflecting. You see, reflection is very, very important. And when we reflect upon the good things, the good thoughts, the noble intention, and we aim towards it, that's satsang, friends. Pratama Bhagati Santahakara Sangha. A person who is in, who is or her, uh, is by himself or herself and is all the time worried and depressed and thinking a certain way and going down more and more in depression. Depression is a disease, cannot be cured by a doctor. They will give you medication to relieve the tension on the inside, meaning to calm yourself. But depression will be there. Depression is something where you give too much thought to something or someone or some situation. And because you can't have it or you can't get it or you can't get that person, young people tend to go down in depression. You know, if I can't marry her or I can't marry him, I will end my life. It doesn't make any sense living. They are not in satsang with themselves. Young people, devotees of God, satsang with yourself means thinking positive. Satsang with yourself meaning aim high and aim at your goals. That is satsang. After two hours we go on home, you know. So this will finish so fast. But then you have how much? 22 hours with yourself. And that's every day. It's only 10 hours per week over here. Two hours went by so quickly. And the rest is 22 hours each day we have with ourselves. Let us say we come to the temple just for two hours. So if we are not in satsang with ourselves, then we can become depressed. We can become frustrated. We can become upset. We can become miserable. We can become all those things because we choose to be that way out of satsang. So, Pratama Bhagati Santaha Karasanga. Do Sarirati Mama Katha Prasanga. Have love to listen to my Katha and have love when you listen to my. Do Sarirati Mama Katha Prasanga. Always have love in your heart. When you listen to my glories and you listen to the narration of Sant Tulsidashi and the great saints and sages, let your heart fill with love. Let your heart fill with bhakti. Let your heart fill with devotion. Don't go to the ear again and say, Oh God, the same thing again. And okay, it's the same thing again. What do you remember from me last time? Anything? Oh yes, I remember. Did you practice it? Oh no, I didn't practice that. I was waiting again. 
So we are accustomed with the katha, but are we practicing what the katha is telling? No. So when you go to school and the teacher gives you work and you didn't do it after giving homework and you didn't do the homework and the teacher will again tell you to do it until you get your homework done. These are all homework for us to do, not in the Monday, friends, when we go out of here. Homework it is called. It is work to be done home. It is work to be done at work. It is work to be done wherever we are. Practice your spirituality. And I'm not saying religion. Intentionally. Practice your spirituality. Out of the mandir. Out of the church. Out of the mosque. And that will determine how we are climbing up the spiritual ladder. Spiritual steps, my friends. Towards self-realization. God-realization. Moksha or salvation. Do Sarirati Mama Katha Prasanga. Brothers and sisters. In this very sad Ramayana, in the end, when Sri Ram had killed Ravan and he returned to the Yodhya and he sat down on the throne and he was sitting on that throne and everybody were there happy that Sri Ram Chandraji had returned and they shouted Jai Jai Kar, Siyavara Rama Chandra Ki, Jai Sri Ram became king. Did he? Imagine the Lord was in the congregation as the king of Ayodhya now after 14 years. He spent one year two years, three years, happily with everybody. And after that three years, one Dhobiwala. You all know who is a Dhobiwala? Children? I know the, the old people know who is Dhobiwala. What about the young ones? <laughs> a Dhobiwala is a washerman. A male washing machine. <laughs> A dhobiwala is, you didn't get it, a male washing machine, a male person who washes clothes. <laughs> so the dhobiwala, my friends, he, one man, started spreading rumors. One man with dirty thought in his mind. Is about to make a Yodhya cry again. Do Sarirati Mamakatha, sorry, Pratama Bhagati Santahagata Sangha. He was not in satsang with himself. This one man, the Dobiwala, I want to ask the young people a question. Children, youngsters, and youths, what do you expect a person who is washing clothes to see? Huh? Spider any clothes? <laughs> yes, you're right. Friends, a person who is, uh, who is going to wash clothes, they are expected to see, not clean clothes, you know. They are expected to see dirt on the clothes. They're looking for dirt. The person who is the washerman or the washerwoman, they are looking for dirt. To know where to scrub. Like that, this Dobiwala was looking, my friends, for dirt in on Mother Sita. And you know what? He could not find any dirt. So he made up some dirt and he threw it at her. Not literally. He said that this is one woman, one king we have who took his wife from somebody else's kingdom and brought her back here to our kingdom and we must now respect her. Immediately he concluded that Sita Mata, who, was, who could not even be touched by Ravan, he concluded that she was in Ravan kingdom, so she had a relationship with Ravan. Friends, I want to tell you something tonight. It is better to take a sledge and come and mash up all those murtis. I put it in inverted commas. You may not get any sin. But you see when you take words and mash up somebody's heart, Ganga can't wash it away. Yamuna can't wash it away. And the Saraswati River can't wash it away when you break somebody's heart. 
Friends, in life, we are in the temple. We go in the church, we go in the mosque, and we well jump away in mala. I tell you, the mala spinning again hot. The mother wrongs the mala making. Shiva, 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 Ram, 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 you can't say nothing good to nobody. And you can't say nothing good about nobody. And you know what? I am a devotee of the Lord. I am a bhakta of the Lord. You know why? Because everybody see me with a nice mala. And everybody see me with a big chandan. And everybody see you with a man I tell you, head cover like that. Although few had not covered tonight. <laughs> and mala japawain. One dobi wala made Sita Mata cry and sent her back to the forest. When Sita Mata went back to the forest, she gave birth to Lavan Kush. Two boys were brought up. And they were excited to meet their father. And when they came, they sat down in front of the father. I'm drifting a little bit from the Navira Bhakti. But I just want to tell you this. The two boys came. And they sat down in front of their father. The father didn't even know that these two children were his son, his sons. And they were told. Ayodhya was told that these two children will come and sing for the Sabha. And the boys came and they are looking at their father sitting on the throne. The father is Sri Ram. Sri Ram is looking at them. He was touched. The two boys had a glow. The two children seemed very humble. They filled with love. They were filled with love. And they looked around at every single face in Ayodhya that were in that sabha that day. And after looking at everyone, they looked at their father Sri Ram. And their eyes were penetrating at him. And they said, we have come. For what? Ham katha sunate purushottam And they spoke about their mother. They spoke about Sri Ram. They spoke about their mother Sita in the forest and how she was at the ashram of a great sage who out of compassion looked after her while she was in family way. They spoke about the difficulties their mother went through after giving birth and the difficulty she had. And they said that the people of Ayodhya were very unjust to her because they listened to a, a, a dobiwala, a man who was looking for dirt. And even though gold is pure, the goldsmith will still put the gold in fire and burn it. This is what our mother went through. Our mother, even though she was pure, she was asked to go through the fire. Even though she was pure, the people of Ayodhya were like goldsmith. They put her in the fire again and again to burn her and to burn our beloved mother. 
and this is what our mother went through friends even though you are pure even though you are good even though you are divine society will want you to go through the fire and they will burn you and burn you and burn you didi i could imagine in your life how many times you have been burnt friends in our lives society will not spare us and you see when you're going up the ladder in life oh bhagwan everybody trying to pull you down you know when you are going up in life friends everybody will try to pull you down sita ma she was burnt once she was burnt in the fire because the people wanted her to go through the fire to make sure that she was pure and now laman kush is sitting there they're looking at the mother sorry looking at the father and suddenly sita ma walked in and she is looking at shri ram chandra ji her hands are together after many years she is looking at shri ram her hands are together and you know what she said let me ask any wife and let us see your husband did something and you were very unhappy and you were hurt badly when you see your husband next time what you will tell him and you wouldn't talk to him but you have to say something i'll tell you if if i am a wife i finish you off <laughs> make a long story short <laughs> i fix in he up good man sita devi looked at shri ram and she said prabhu these are your two sons i have come to give them to you and i want you to bless me that in every life of mine in every birth if i have to come i want you to be my husband narayan narayan you know why sita devi saw shiram for who he is not based on what the society did and not what and based on what society was saying friends when you look at people don't judge them believe in them for who they are that is satsang don't judge nobody the old people had a saying you know don't judge the book by the cover read it that book of shri ram's life is his katha and friends do sari rati mama katha prasanga means what it means that every one of us has a story every one of us have a story in life and we must love to listen to the katha of the lord forgive me for using the word story because the word katha has no equivalent but it is only translated as story which means in english something that was fabricated but love my glories love my katha love my bhakti he says didi when we are able to love for the sake of loving that is the second step and friends whenever we look at someone see them for who they are don't judge them don't judge nobody in this world sita devi saw shri ram for who he is not only because she was his wife and he was her husband she saw him beyond what everybody else was seeing the third step is teesri bhakti hai abhiman tyag kar the third step on the spiritual path is abhiman tyag kar give up your abhiman give up false pride be humble friends
I'm going to say something to explain this in one line. The higher you go in life, is the lower you must bow. Higher you go, lower you bow. With humility. Abhiman Tyagakar. Give up the Abhiman. And it says here, Guru Pada Pankaja Seva Ti Sari Bhagati Yaman. The third step that we must put our feet on in climbing the ladder of success of spirituality is always touch the feet of the Guru. And the Guru is mother, the Guru is father, the Guru is spiritual teacher. Don't go Guru hopping. Guru hopping, this Guru not good. Let me try that one. That one not good. Let me try that one. That one not good. Let me try that one. And whole of our life, we keep on Guru hopping. And my friends, at the end of our life, have nothing. Every day, chant. If you yawn, Sri Krishna. If you sneeze, Om Namah Shivai. When we sneeze, we say, excuse me. That's, well, that's, of course, manners. We must do that. But in the heart, in the mind, we must say, Om Namah Shivai. Jai Sri Krishna. When you're walking in the gym, or in the park, or on your treadmill, people is put these things in the airs, and they're listening to maybe music, whatever type of music. My personal thing is, if I am walking in the park or in the gym, wherever, on the treadmill, I, I want to listen to nothing, except Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Om. Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Om. Every step must be Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Om. And then from the park, Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Om. <laughs> Once the sun going down, it's Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Om. Because you live in Trinidad. If we live somewhere else, then we can say Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Om. Even while going Hari Om, Hari Om, Hari Om. Isn't it? Chant the Lord's name. Children and youngsters and youths, don't take your Guru Mantra for granted. It works miracles in our lives. That is Mantra. So, that is the, the what you call the fifth thing. Mantra Japa Mama Dhrida Vishwasa Panchama Bhajanu Sobeda Prakasha. And the fifth is Chant Bhajan, Chant Kirtan. You know, people in India, doesn't, doesn't understand how we in Trinidad have so much of devotion, devotion when we sing bhajan. Because three quarter of the people who sing the bhajan don't understand the meaning. Isn't it? Three quarter of the people don't understand the meaning. And yet they're singing with so much of love and so much of devotion. And they, people in India just, uh, you know, ask this Baba, Oh, Panaji, how come they don't know Hindi and yet they sing so sweetly? All because of love. All because of love. So, bhajan, panchama bhajana, so be the prakasa, sing the Lord's name, chant the bhajan. Now, it gets a little bit philosophical here, but we dealt with this earlier in the week. Chatadama shila, virati bahu karma. The sixth one is chatadama. You all remember what is dhamma? Yeah, you all remember what is dhamma? Remember shama? Dhamma, Uparama, Titiksha. What is Dhamma? Control of the senses. Very good. Chata Dhamma, the sixth thing in spirituality is to control your senses. Shield means Chata Dhamma Shield. Shield means Now this is not English Shield. Eh? This is Hindi Shield. So when you're controlling your senses, put on a shield. And what is the shield? Good character. Shield means good character. Girls and boys, devotees of God. Sri Mohandas Karamchand Gandhiji said, education without character is very dangerous. I want to wish all the young people tonight here, on Sankhya television, I want to wish all the young people who will be going back to school very soon, good education, but good character also. 
that is the sixth thing. Nirati biran, uh, nirata nirantara sajjana dharma. Always maintain your reputation and your good name. Satava, uh, satava sama moha maye jagadeka. The seventh is seventh form or the seventh step in life. In the spirituality, Sri Ram tells Shabari, he says, see the entire world. Satava Sama. Sama means see the entire world as equal. Entire world is equal. Satava Sama Mohi Maya Jagadeka. See the entire world with me in it. And when you are able to see me in the entire world, you have reached a very high level of spirituality. That is the seventh thing. The eighth, Didi, means that in life, Atava Jata Labha Santosha. Very simple and very sweet. The eighth step on the ladder of spirituality is always santosha, always stay contented. Atava jata laba santosha. Didi, more than anything else tonight, I want to wish you and your dulaha for the rest of your life in this world. May you be so fulfilled filled and fulfilled with contentment. Santosham paramam sukam. Meaning, always be contented. If you are contented, that is the eighth step on the ladder to spirituality. And what is the ninth one? The ninth one, finally tonight, says, Navi bhakti hai sab ke saath saral aur kapat rahit. This one is so sweet, eh? But in fact, all is so sweet. The ninth form of devotion that we means we should always be simple. And we should always cherish in our heart faith for the Lord. Shraddha. Without any negativity entering. If we are able to do this, my friends, we have reached the ninth step in our devotion. As I conclude, I wish each and every one of us tonight that we be blessed, that we can reach the ninth step. And from there, once you reach the ninth step, you reach where you're going. Now, friends, these nine steps in devotion, I want to ask you a question. How many times did you hear this? Papa, how many times? Two times? Only? Didi, how many times you heard this? Nine devotion? Shabari Katha? Many times? What about you all? Many times? Out of the many times, how many, how many out of the nine you practice? No, don't tell me that one. You just think. How many out of the nine? Okay, today, how many times did you chant the Lord's name? I'm just asking the easiest one now. Huh? How many times did you chant the Lord's name? Exactly. Some people said one, some people said 108. Some people said, um, Baba didn't chant the name. And we hear the katha, we fed up here the katha. Baba do the same thing again. And if you did not chant, let's practice this one. Oh, basse karam bolo, ram bolo, ram ram bolo re.
चंद्र की जय फ्रेंड्स वंस अवर हार्ट इज फिल्ड विद लव लाइक शबरी द लॉर्ड विल डू व्हाट एवर इट टेक्स एंड ही विल कम इन आवर डायरेक्शन ही विल बी विद अस ही रिवील हिमसेल्फ टू अस एंड फॉर दिस दीदी एंड ऑफ कोर्स पापा थैंक यू सो मच फॉर अलाउइंग अस टू बी इन योर सेलिब्रेशन फॉर फाइव डेज एंड फाइव नाइट्स वी थैंक यू and we wish you many many more years in this world of wedded bliss as well as most importantly grace and mercies of the lord in your life you are blessed with many beautiful gifts your children your grandchildren and their families are special gifts that you will cherish and we wish that with that that joy of living will forever be with you and so thank you for allowing my group and myself uh the chinmay gyan kirtan mandali didi to be part of your celebration and may god bless you forever to all you devotees who have come from far in the distances thank you so very much thank you for your blessing friends your blessing helps us do what we are doing thank you for your love my phone after every night is filled with so many messages and everyone complimenting and everyone sending blessing and everyone sending love it comes through the phone you know and us feel it <laughs> it comes every time you open a message and people say baba god bless you god bless you god bless you one person was send a message and they said you know i they felt I, as i do as though i was talking to them and that person living in miami somewhere dakshina is not all the thing bhaiya not every time is dakshina sometimes they say baba god bless you that is the best dakshina that is the best you could ever have in life and you know sometimes the mind always go on dakshina and dakshina and dakshina what i give you and what i give you and check in the money but sometimes it's not that when you hear somebody say god bless you that is the greatest thing that you ever receive and so that's what i want to say to you tonight and i want you to say that to me tonight may god bless us all this is what the lord is saying in in terms of our spiritual evolution in terms of our spiritual development god bless you all